Hello lovely people, are you ready for more experiments? If yes, you came to the right place. Today we'll be testing the myth that running a subwoofer in higher ohm load will give you better SQ. So online, there's loads of debate between, especially with between bass heads, but I think in SQ world is kind of the same, that people say that when you're running a subwoofer in higher ohm load, the performance is going to be better, it's going to be more fidelity, more SQ, whatever you want to call it. So we know that subwoofers, especially in car audio, most of them are going to be dual voice call. They're going to have dual two, dual fours, dual ones, whatever that is. So we have the option when we're wiring the subwoofer, we can wire the coils in parallel or in series and we can have different ohm loads for example these two subwoofers are both alpine hdz 110 and our s series 10 inch shallow mount both of them are dual four ohms so if we wire them in parallel we get two ohms nominal load and if we wire them in series we can get eight ohms for this test we'll be using these two subwoofers one of them is going to be in the back this one i'm going to put it in the footwell as a front sub and we'll be using this recoil amplifier which is red 1200.1 now this amplifier it is rated and can go down all the way down to one ohm and is going to be plenty enough power for what we're testing so we know that amplifiers when you increasing the ohm load they don't have that much output so for example at four ohms we have only 500 watts or so if we double that we're cutting this in half so at eight ohms we will have about 200 watts only but the power does not matter because we will be testing everything at the same SPL level when we have a subwoofer and amplifier combination there's really two things that come into play and in how sound is being affected that emanates from a subwoofer first of all is the amplification itself the amplifier so as part one of this test we will be looking at how this amplifier reacts into different loads at exactly the same output power so if we take for example 50 watts of output i will measure the distortion i'm going to show you how it looks like at 8 ohms 4 ohms 2 ohms and 1 ohm and we will see if there is a difference and if there is what kind of difference that is because if the myth is that at 8 ohms is going to be much better quality than at 2 ohms we should be able to see that i will be measuring this amplifier on static loads some people say that oh you're measuring on resistor is this not the same as on speakers but i did that test it's kind of the same it doesn't matter at the same time when we're going to measure the subwoofers we're going to measure a few things so we're going to do an impedance sweep just to see how the impedance differs from wire to series and wire to parallel and then we're going to measure the output with a measuring microphone in the driver's seat and we will see if there is a difference in any of the parameters so a little bit of a theory about amplifiers and we can say subwoofers but we can say speaker drivers in general when you wire an amplifier to a higher ohm load it will perform better in a way that is going to be more efficient and it's not going to struggle as much because when you wire the amplifier to the ground down to like one ohm or so you have more current flowing through it and that in theory again causes more distortion and more heat is being generated we're going to test the distortion when i'm going to measure this amplifier now if we're talking about speakers or subwoofers the main ingredient in the whole equation is the coil now the coil has a few different parameters firstly the main one is the resistance or the impedance however it's impedance it's not a resistance when you're wiring a subwoofer down to two ohms it doesn't mean that through a whole frequency range it is two ohms it is an impedance peak and it goes down for imported subwoofers it's totally different things so we will see that when we're going to take the impedance measurement i'm going to explain you that in more detail the second thing that a affects how the subwoofer sounds and the frequency response as well potentially is the inductance so coil has inductance and when you wire the coil in series or in parallel that inductance is either being halved or doubled and inductance is the main kind of factor in sq because the lower the inductance the lower the distortion potentially the more high frequencies can pass and weird thing is induction goes down when you wire the subwoofer in parallel 
so hey ho and that's exactly what we're gonna try to measure and see so now i'm just gonna hook up everything we're gonna see if we manage to bust this smith or is there some truth to it? As always, a very quick guide to the setup what we're doing. So now I have this one connected in series to eight ohms. It shows 5.5, sometimes six, 5.7, because it moves from basically from air. So this is eight ohms because this is DC. We're gonna see that from impedance. Impedance I'm gonna take with a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. I have a DIY measuring jig. This amplifier are connected to my test bench, but only to the lithium. I need to connect to the power because my normal subwoofer is under the seat and I don't want to redo anything for this test. If I'm going to turn it on, that's the relay on. That's the relay. Clicked. Uh, idle current 1.2 amps, 13.2 volts. And I do have a wire now connected to the front because I was testing the front now. This is how it looks like. That's the front subwoofer connected going to the back. This one now is wired to two ohms. I did one, then I rewired and I measured again. Microphone is in the driver's seat. It's not moving, it's stationary. I'm doing sweeps. Bluetooth into the DSP, DSP into the amplifier and amplifier into the subwoofers. So let's jump into the laptop and let's see what measurements we have. In the past few weeks, I did develop kind of a cold, so I do apologize for my voice. I didn't measure the THD versus level on the speakers themselves. If you wanna see that, I have a video titled Measuring Amplifiers on Resistors versus Speakers. Is there a difference? Just a heads up, there is no difference. That's why I didn't wanna show you that. Now, we're gonna start with checking how amplifiers react to different loads. What are they doing? For this, I'm gonna show you my own measurements, but I wanna show you this as well because this is a bit opposite that I got. This is on Distortion Factory. Alan was measuring powers 8k. So 8k but is a full range amplifier. And what he had in this, I can show you this. So this is a half an ohm, one ohm, two ohms and four ohms. So you can see this is THD versus frequency and there is a slight difference. If we have a look at the lower frequencies, which, what is more important to us, the difference is between, I wanna say 0 0.02 and 0 0.1. So there is kind of a difference. However, is it audible? Now, if we have a look at THD versus level, it's kind of the same. He posted a graph in DBFS level, so it's not watts. Obviously, we cannot see which line would correspond to watts, but I can tell you from my experience when I measure amplifier, I think 100 watts is going to be somewhere here, about minus 20 DBFS, because it is an 8K, so there's a lot of power, so I'm guessing here. So between these, if we're going to take even higher levels like here, here, let's say minus 14 dBFS, the difference between half an ohm and 4 ohms is the difference between 0 0.04 and 0 0.1. So again, there is difference, but for sub-levels, in theory, this is absolutely not audible. Now, let me show you what I measured. This is a spectrum of 8 ohms, 4 ohms, 2 ohms, and 1 ohm. I didn't know the voltage as well. If you want, you can calculate. I wanted to measure at 50 watts just because of my resistors. Uh, the resistors that I have is... 50 watts, so I didn't want to burn them by running like 200 watts through them. So if you use Ohm's law, you can calculate the voltage for the specific Ohm load to have 50 watts. So in this case, 8 Ohms, that's 20 volts, 4 Ohms, 14 volts, 2 Ohms, 10 volts, and 1 Ohm, 7 volts. And again, we know from Ohm's law that when the voltage decreases, the amperage or the current draw increases. So this is, all the measurements are 50 watts on different loads. The difference that we can see is in the floor noise, and in the harmonics as well. So let me show you. This is 8 ohms. You can see it has the lowest floor noise. So that means the best signal to noise ratio. And for this one, you can see the second harmonic is the lowest, but the third one is the highest. Surprise, surprise. Then 4 ohms, slightly higher floor noise, 2 ohms, even higher, and 1 ohm, the highest floor noise. And potentially the lowest harmonics. If we have a look at the numbers themselves, at 8 ohms, THD plus noise, oh, we should be looking at THD really, not noise, 0 0.25, 4 ohms, 
0 0.12, which is half of that, 2 ohms, exactly the same, 0 0.12, and 1 ohm, it rises again, 0 0.26. So the difference between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 we can say it's on the level of error of measurement so for this specific purpose we can say it's kind of the same now if we have a look at thd versus level i measured only up to close to 100 watts because again i didn't want to burn the resistors so this is 8 ohms thd versus level this is 4 ohms 2 ohms and 1 ohm so through this range, we can see the difference is if we have a look at higher power, it's between 0 0.1 and maybe 0 0.3. So three times, however, it's you can see it's crisscrossed. So again, this is just error of measurement. Now, T, this is THD. THD plus noise is exactly the same because the noise doesn't influence. The biggest difference is in the harmonics. So this is the second harmonic, which we can see it's lowest on 8 ohms, then 4 ohms, then 2 ohms, and it's the highest at 1 ohm. However, the third harmonic is, it's a mix. This is on 8 ohms, on 4 ohms is the lowest for some reason, then 2 ohms, and then 1 ohm. So from objective measurements of this amplifier, we can say that the lower the ohm load you wire the amplifier, kinda you get more distortion, but this difference, especially for sub-levels, is really not an audible difference. It's more measurable. So this is how the amplifier behaves. Now let's have a look at the impedance of these drivers. So these are all impedances, and you can see uh, they're different. It's only two drivers but the impedance is massively different. So if we take, for example, the shallow mount in the footwell in 0.3 cubic foot enclosure, this is the difference between wired in parallel down to 2 ohms and wired in series up to 8 ohms. So yes, here we can see it's 2.2 something and in series we have 9.4 here but on DC, it's 8. So what differences can we see? Because the difference is exactly the same on the HDZ as well. This is 2 ohms, and this is 8 ohms. Obviously, the HDZ is in a bigger box. It's a bigger subwoofer. So it has an FB of 38, and that shallow mount has an FB of... 58, but that is not important. Well, we can see the difference between these two responses. Obviously, the peak is different, the level is different. However, this level of rise at the top end is different. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I was saying that wiring the subwoofer in parallel cuts the voice coil inductance in half. So the flatter this line, the lower the inductance. If we're comparing just these two subwoofers, the shallow mount and the full size, we can say that the shallow mount, which is this one, the orange one, it has a bit lower inductance compared to the full size 11 inch. When you wire the subwoofer in series, that inductance adds up and you have a much higher rise of the impedance into the higher frequencies. And it's exactly the same with a shallow mount. Lower, higher, exactly the same, it goes up. So it does affect the inductance and impedance at the same time. However, is it audible? We're going to see from other measurements. Now, what I want to point out to you as well is this what we call a box rise or whatever you want to say it. This is this subwoofer wired in parallel down to 2 ohms. So if we're going to zoom in a tiny bit and we take into account the frequency range that that subwoofer is playing, we can see that this subwoofer is playing from about 25 hertz all the way up to 80, 90 up till here so we can see that the 2 ohm rating is only above 60 hertz 60 and 90 so if you cross this subwoofer a little bit lower like 70 or 60 your amplifier will never see 2 ohm load the lowest is going to see like 3 ohms and higher than that the lower you cross it the higher the ohm load is going to see if you wire the subwoofer down to 2 ohms and you're playing something like 30, 40, 50 hertz, that's not 2 ohms. At 40 hertz, we have, what, 13 ohms instead of 2. So this is why that claim that you're wiring the subwoofer down is kind of pointless, 
because that very very low ohm load it's only in the very narrow frequency range that that subwoofer is playing okay so we see the difference in impedance level we see the difference in inductance now let's have a look at the acoustical measurements i'm not going to zoom in very much because then it's very difficult to see the whole big picture so what we have here if i'm going to remove this these are two measurements of the same 11 inch driver from the very back from the boot while it's wired to 2 ohms and while it's wired to 8 ohms. This is a sweep, it's not RTA with pink noise, so we do see some discrepancies in the measurement. Now, why that is? It could be because when I took out the subwoofer, when I rewired it, when I put it back, it might be that I put it back not 100% in exactly the same place where it was. Maybe there was one trim panel that the subwoofer was pressed against a bit more than the other. There might be a resonance or something because my boot is not treated. But for our sake, we can say that there is absolutely no difference in the frequency response between the subwoofer wire to 2 ohms and wire to 8 ohms. Let's have a look at the shallow mount in the front subwoofer location. Again, there are some discrepancies, but they're so small that I personally can say this is an error of measurement. And to me, these responses are identical. Even if we have a look at here, like where the biggest difference are, it's what, one and a half dB. It's not audible at all. Now, I did push these drivers quite a lot, just on a higher level, so we can see the shallow mount is 103 dB, and the big one in the back is about 95, close to 100 dB level. So this is a frequency response. Let's have a look at the distortion. This is the big subwoofer in the boot, wired down to 2 ohms. Distortion is below 1%. This, the grain line, means that the distortion measurement goes down into the floor noise. It's not loud enough to say that it's a very accurate measurement, but everything that is a solid line, it's an accurate measurement. What happens when we rewire to 8 ohms does the distortion decrease massively so that we could hear a difference absolutely not it's exactly the same yes again there are differences but these differences is error of measurement and it has nothing to do with the re rewiring shallow mount 8 ohms and 2 ohms identical there is absolutely no differences yes again at 30 hertz we have three and a half percent instead of 1.8 but there's barely any level because if you remember the shallow amount at 30 hertz is right there so it is playing like 20 db lower than the peak that it has now let's have a look at the impulse can you see the difference this is two ohms versus eight ohms to me there's no difference that's a big subwoofer and this is the shallow amount to me there is absolutely no differences so conclusion for all of this even before i start doing this test before start measuring i knew what i'm gonna get and i have absolutely no idea where this myth is coming from because people imagine that in home audio they use higher impedance drivers and a lot of people assume that home audio drivers sound better than in a car just because of that higher impedance that is absolutely not true the only difference that you're gonna get between wiring the subwoofer in parallel or in series is how the amplifier behaves and how cool or hot it runs because when you wire the amplifier to lower ohm load you will have more current flowing through it and that extra current will cause heat and potentially stability of the amplifier however with a higher ohm loads like 8 ohms on a subwoofer you will not get absolutely any power so wire the subwoofers to the ground, wire the amplifiers to the ground and have more power than you need in order not to clip the amplifier but don't worry about wiring your subwoofers in different configurations because you will not get any better results. If you feel that you have better results wiring in a different configuration that's purely psychoacoustics and it's only in your head because these measurements prove that there's absolutely no differences so i hope you learned something i hope this was useful thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one